Hello, my name is John, and in this Far From Standard tutoring video, we're going to be going over resonance, but more specifically, resonance contributors. So, resonance is a very important topic, especially starting out with organic chemistry. It's also very frustrating. I know from personal experience that resonance, especially beginning out in organic chemistry, can be very frustrating because there's a lot of things you got to remember, and you might miss certain things. So, um, this is very important, so we'll get right into it. So, a common theme in resonance is this sort of movement of electrons, okay? So resonance applies to the movement of delocalized electrons without changing the connectivity of the molecule. So a common, a common theme you will see is the movement of electrons down to make a bond and then the movement of electrons from a bond back up to um, an, an atom, not the adjacent atom, but next to it, okay? And so this will create the double bond here and then you move those sources of electrons back up to that um, B atom there. So a reminder from formal charge is that the movement of these delocalized electrons causes charges to be present now. So in most cases, this atom that no longer has the electrons with it will most likely have a positive charge, and now the atom that gained those um, pairs of electrons from the double bond now will be negative. So resonance is the movement of these delocalized electrons um, throughout the connectivity of a molecule. You're not going to change the connectivity because then it changes the entire molecule, okay? So resonance, if you look at our three uh, conditions for resonance, is no, the net number of electrons does not change, neither does the net charge or the sigma bonds, which is the connectivity. So even though we did move electrons around, they were delocalized. A uh, reminder is that delocalized electrons can be moved. Localized electrons stay on that atom. Um, even though we did move electrons here, the net charge stayed the same. The positive and the negative cancel each other out. Okay? And the sigma bonds did not move. Okay? Sigma bond here and here, this is a pi bond. It's just a source of electrons that can be moved. Okay? Also keep in mind here that there are two arrows that we are using. This double arrow here means that no atoms are moving. Okay? This is to indicate that these are resonance contributors. The curved arrow is used as kind of mechanism arrows to show electrons moving. So with curved arrows, it starts with the source electrons and ends where it is going. So the source electrons are now moving to form a double bond. It will be the pi electrons. And also these pi electrons from the second bond are moving to become um, the pair on that B atom there. Okay? So the three conditions for resonance, now we're going to apply them to resonance contributors. Okay? So we have this um, example here. Okay? And we're going to apply these three criteria to determine the resonance contributors and how we rank them. So how we rank them is, do the contributors all have closed shells? Um, if they don't, they're obviously not going to be the best contributor. They're going to be ranked the last. We also want to minimize the formal charge. Okay? So if there's, a if there's a contributor without a formal charge, it'll take precedent over ones that do have formal charges. If there is a formal charge present, then you want to have the charge on the most electronegative atom be negative. And you want to have the positive charge be on the least electronegative atom. So in our example here, we have a nitrogen and an oxygen. And now one of the trends that's very important with uh, chemistry, and especially in orgo, is the trend of electronegativity. And that trend is moving to the right and upwards. Okay, so if we compare nitrogen and oxygen, we see that oxygen, following that trend, is more electronegative than nitrogen. So if there is a charge present, it'll want to be a negative charge on the oxygen and a positive one on the nitrogen, okay? So if we start off with our molecule here, one of the resonance contributors that we'll go for, through first is the blue arrows here. We're going to move up to here. Is this our first resonance contributor? All right. If we move following this theme here, we move from the source electrons down to uh, make an additional pi bond and then move this pi bond up to the nitrogen, we're going to get this. Okay. And this is going to cause a change in the charges. So now that oxygen has three bonds here, um, if we do the formal charge equation, we're going to realize that it's going to have a positive charge. And the nitrogen is going to have a negative charge, right? Nitrogen usually has five valence electrons, so five minus the number of sticks minus the number of dots is going to lead to a negative charge. Okay? So now let's move uh, electrons in the other way with the red arrows here. We're going to move, same kind of theme here, we're moving from source electrons to make a bond and then moving the bond electrons back up to oxygen. It's going to lead to a different molecule. Um, in the sense of that these electrons are in different places, the DU of electrons. So now this oxygen is going to have um, three pairs of electrons on it. So that's going to lead to a, a negative formal charge. And the nitrogen is going to have no uh, electrons localized on anymore, so it's going to have a positive charge. And to check, you can do the formal charge equation. 
So now we need to evaluate these contributors and rank them. Well, obviously they're all closed shells. They all have the eight valence electrons. They're all happy and bonded to enough things, or they have lone pairs on them to give them the valence shell and the octet rule. So now we need to minimize formal charge. Well, this resonance contributor has no formal charge, so this is obviously the best contributor. If we need to rank these two, we're going to follow this third rule. There is a charge present. We want to put that negative charge on the most electronegative um, atom, which will be the oxygen. So this resonance contributor is better than this one because we don't want to have the negative on nitrogen, which is less electronegative. So the fundamentals of resonance are these three criteria, and you can apply them to how you rank resonance contributors based on formal charge and closed shells and electronegativity. And that is the fundamentals of resonance.